Hello, Nora Spicy here, and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be creating a Wisdom Dragon. My first time resin printing and painting a miniature, and I'm going to do more in the future. This video took about four months to get out. I apologize for that, the time frame and such, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. These Warhammer paints and these figures belong to my partner. But um, if I need one of the colors, he said I could use it, but I don't think I will because those are high quality more or less. They're from Warhammer after all. But I bought some acrylic paint. Now apparently acrylic's not the best to paint with for minifigures, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Plus these were pretty cheap, so hopefully they'll work for what I'm doing. I have some glue to put my model together. Apparently you're supposed to glue it before you spray paint it, and then you can paint spray paint it easier. <laughs> I didn't do that. Now, uh, I got some fine detail brushes, these were cheap as well. I also got this, which is a paint palette. It came with some brushes, but probably won't use those. Say a little rubberish paint palette thing, and it's gonna take up most of my room here. I've got these as well, but I won't paint those, uh, but I can if I want to. Uh, those are compatible with D&D 5e. As you can see, I've got the D&D monster manual here. We'll get that to that in a second. I'm just gonna put these over here. I don't know what size base I've got, but my partner has this, which is a base holder. Uh, this is anywhere up to 40 millimeters. Now, I won't be very good at painting and any of that. See, I, I've got ADHD, which is why I'm not looking into the camera. I'm very bad at that, I apologize. I've got ADHD and, well, it, it makes me pretty clumsy and stupid, so. <laughs> I think I printed it bigger, but this is for the Wisdom Dragon, so. Fortunately, I can't use that. I'll keep it in mind for the future, or I'll buy one that's slightly bigger to hold bigger things. So I spray painted the Wisdom Dragon. Now I think I did an okay job spray painting. You see that's gonna stand on there like that. After reading the construction, it seems fairly simple. Now I spray painted in black because uh, that way I can take care of shadow detail and it should be easier to paint. I left some supports on. Would you believe that? Thank God they came off easily. Small. So, while I let this the, the glue dry, why don't we talk paints and brushes and such? So, the monster menu. Now, the only figure I'll be painting today will be the Black Dragon. The Undead Soldier can just sit there glued. I believe page 86 is dragons. So, you know, I bought this for something different. Uh, Plus, I want to start DDing at some point, and I just like the sound of painting minifigs and printing them and such. And ah, dragons. Here we go. So I looked at this already, and because this is a wisdom dragon, well, that's what the the print's called. But there isn't any like true wisdom dragon, you know, one that's true. Now the best I got was either bronze, green, or blue. I, I was gonna paint a brass dragon because it's um. They, they like cr they crave conversation, which sounds pretty wise to me. But I don't know if I can paint bronze. <laughs> uh, I think bronze might be a too difficult color to paint. Now these uh, were cheap. These paints they were like twenty six pounds or or such. There were sixteen colors. So we've got dead white, sun yellow, orange fire, bloody red, ultramarine blue. I'm not sure they can use that uh, name. Can they? Dark green, goblin green, bone white, bronze flesh tone. Oh, I do have bronze. I could paint bronze. Um, leather brown, beastly brown. Maybe I will paint bronze because this is ultimately marine blue, and I don't have many shades of blue, but I've got more shades of like bronzes brown. So maybe I will paint a bronze dragon, a brass dragon. Sorry. Stone wall gray. I mean, it's my first, so you know, black, silver, gun metal, and polished gold. So. Bronze Dragon has like black wing tip, paint mostly bronze, has a slightly stonish color nose. I don't have horns though. I mean, you get what you're given, I guess, you know? Maybe I'll, I'll paint bronze since I have a bronze flesh tone color. And I, you know, I use bronze flesh tone with blackish tips, stonewall gray, the nose area, then I'll use dead white, no, no, bone white for the underbelly. Put some beastly brown in there too. I shouldn't really need any of the other colors. Now I'll keep the monster manual open to the 
bronze dragon so I can see it uh, over here. Um, we're gonna glue this guy to the base now. For me, my hands are absolutely fucked. They are kind of screwy and they don't really work very well. So this is not gonna go very well, but it is what it is. I wanna do something, I ain't gonna fucking let any kind of injury, disability, or anything get in my fucking way. I'm just gonna do it, man. I, I don't give a damn. <laughs> this model only cost about a pound to print. If I fuck up royally, I can just start again with a different one. You know? Now, while I'm still waiting for the dragon to dry, it's been about seven minutes or so, I just wanna thank Duncan Rhodes, Painting Academy, his, some of his videos so far. I've only just started watching them in the last like three, four hours, but his first couple of videos that I watched were very inspiring. Um, especially some of the tips you should do and such, and especially the thinning your paint, because otherwise it's gonna go on way too thick. Now, uh, if I haven't also mentioned where to get this dragon, it was part of the Dungeons and Monsters 3-pack on Humble Bundle, which unfortunately has ended, and the link to where it originally was, which was on my mini factory, doesn't seem to exist anymore, so... Whereas to get this version of the Wisdom Dragon, I don't know. I apologize. The Warhammer stuff, I am interested in the Warhammer stuff. Apologies. If you don't hear me, like these Ultramarines. I bought these for my partner because he's the one who wanted to paint things. Um, including this paint set as well. But I don't want to fuck up top notch stuff because it's costly. Very costly. So I got cheap stuff to learn with as that's what you should do, rather than going ahead and buying the expensive stuff, like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be all expensive about it, and then fuck up and lose tons of money. Let's not do that. You see, they're, you see, they're already watered down, um, which means I won't have to water them down as much, because they seem to already be watered down, unlike, say, Citadel paints, which won't be. Let's just see how it goes on for the dragon, shall we? So, I'm just gonna pick him up here. Let's start with the head area. And you see they're already watered down, which is kind of a shame. Unless I was supposed to shake the bottle. Ah. There's your problem. Okay, so first mistake. Shake the paint bottle. Now that's a nice consistency look. Look at that. So we're just gonna paint the entire thing bronze because we need to go layer by layer. Seems kind of obvious, but to new people, you just don't know that. I mean, for me, I, I sort of knew to do that because, you know, playing with all these, like, painting programs and uh, 3D modeling stuff and such, you know, a lot of it, you have to go layer by layer, especially for, like, 3D texturing, you have to go layer by layer, and you need to put on two thin coats. Now, uh, throughout the length of this video, however long the video is, I don't know, probably about 15, 20 minutes, maybe, um, if you see something that you don't like, or you uh, think that I need to improve on, or you simply just want to give me some advice, um, just go ahead and comment down below and give me that advice, because, like I say, I'm new, so don't roast me too hard here while I'm working. I don't really know what I'm doing. It's my first time ever painting, and I need all the help I can get my hands on. Okay, it is now painted bronze, and I think two thin coats is enough. So. We will potentially be switching colours here in a minute. Now, I said that I would not be using these brushes, but I've got this beastly brown here. Now, I thought I could layer it on a little bit. Just gotta shake the bottle first, dumbass. Uh, like, splatter it on here and there as sort of like a overtone, like whitewash type thing. So I'm gonna layer it on a bit thin. So I'm gonna make it like a thin layer of beastly brown just to overlay it. Yeah, that'd be too thick for what I'm thinking, yeah? So we just add more water. Keep adding water until it's really thin. Now we'll only do like one coat of this. And it needs to be a thin, like sort of like a, a, a whitewash type thing, but we're doing sort of a dirt wash, if you know what I mean. So I just want it as thin as possible. Now I'm just gonna do a test spot on the back. And then I'll use, once I've finished it, I'll let it dry for a minute. And then I'm gonna use another brush to like dry, like dry brush it off. And I'm hoping this works, because this is my idea to do, not anyone else's, you know? 
be giving me the SD APS idea I haven't like, watched any videos on it or anything just sort of thought about it and was like sure that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> if it fails it fails it doesn't you know it's a learning it's all learning but if it doesn't it will look, look, look good right hopefully I have to say painting that brown was kind of a mistake because it's taking some of the bronze paint off I also left a a bristle here. I should have waited for it to dry properly. As you can see, some of the areas, uh, if, if the camera will focus, some of the areas have become faded. And you can start to see the black coming through. So it's taken off some of that uh, second base coat that I did. I might repaint the bronze, a third bronze layer on top. But the brown I did didn't, wasn't that bad because you can see the spots of brown here and there. So a thin layer of brown painted on top of actual dry paint would have worked, I think. As you can see there, right there on the arm, you see that brown, brown spotting? That's what the brown was for. Um, but yeah, I made a mistake, so I just didn't let the paint dry for long enough before I repainted the layer. These are the things that come with learning. Apologies that we're in like vertical mode here filming, but uh, yeah, these are the things that come with learning. Right, so I'm gonna paint again on top of the bronze. I previously painted one final coat of bronze. Okay, I'm back again. It's been way over an hour. I've let this dry. Not the best paint job I've ever seen. Obviously I haven't seen that many. <laughs> but it is now bronze again and is mostly dry. So now we're gonna go back over with the brown, do a, a brown wash, which I've since learned is actually a decent way to give a the look that I'm after, which you know it works. I didn't know that. I didn't watch a video or anything, I just suddenly knew that it worked. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let that sort of drip off. Maybe dab it off a little bit or let it, or wash it under water after so long. Because you see, it's only going on parts, you know, it's not like, we want that bronze color to stay, to stick around. But we want the brown to be in like cracks and crevices and to dry on in certain areas and to give it sort of a muddied look. Here and there. A tip for anyone doing this, if you don't want your clothes to be muddied and painted, especially if you like your clothes, wear clothes you don't care about. I made that mistake and it won't be my last mistake, but it's a mistake. I don't mind it being on the base, I can clean up later and paint over it if I need to. It's not a problem. So far that's looking pretty good, it's got into those cracks and crevices just like I thought. Here with our lovely dragon, I apologise, it's been about... No, oh, I'm apologising to you, I'm apologising to myself, it's been about a couple of hours for me. He does look bronze-ish, with a hint of brown on top. Not the worst looking thing I've ever seen, and from a distance he'll look fine I think. Yeah, so apologies, my keyboard broke and I have to go I'll buy a new one. Hello, welcome back, it's been roughly 24 plus hours since I left this dry. I applied a second layer of the white. As you can see, it's, bit, it's on there a bit thicker. No, no, it's not perfectly white, but it looks pretty good. I mean, overall, the model looks great so far. So we're here to apply the little bit of black and the red that they need to do. Other than that, I think we're done with this model. And they need a little bit of red on the teeth. Just looks like it's been snapping on something. That's my first model I suppose let me give you a better look let me get the light there you go that's my first model painted can you see me I'm assuming you can okay so my first model ever created painted resin printed all of that done and I think it turned out pretty well for my first time I do I really like the whole color scheme the the, the the bronzy brown i've done there was a, th a few other things i was going to do but i think at my skill level it's too soon for it so you know i've just got to get better with time and practice print some more and paint some more you know maybe even paint them oh print them slightly bigger so i can with my clunky hands be able to paint a bit finer detail because you know, the bigger it is, the better I, detail I can get into it myself because of my clunky ass hands. But uh, other than that, I think that's my first painted model and it was it was fun. It, it, it took quite some time, but it was fun overall and can't wait to paint some more. So 
If you enjoyed this, subscribe, I guess, and I'll see you in the next video, whether it be another printing and painting video or it be something else. My content tends to be a bit all over the place. It just comes with the territory over here. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all guys later. The, um, the Wisdom Dragon suffered 1d4 falling damage and uh, I'm having to glue it back together, although his hand will not glue back on. Tiny little hand here, because it broke at the elbow. But uh, hopefully they can get him back on the base. Um, I've already had to glue back his fucking wing and his tail back on, which they've glued pretty well, to be honest. You can barely tell that they'd be glued back together, but, you know, I'm gonna put it in a better place than I did last time, so... Yeah.